I've logged into my talk to m free account and this is the same account I used for the webinar on Monday so it has our single cosy attached to it and we can view that either in a list as we have here or in our map view where we can see the location of our cosy and the green marker to show that it is currently online. We've also got the ability to create as many users as we want in the account and we've created a couple of users and a couple of administrators who have further rights. So adding a user is very easy. Just give them a name, obviously the details, email address and a new password for them. And it's easy to set that up. You also have the options to force them to change their password the first time they log in. Um, whether they want to use the two-factor with a PIN code going to a mobile phone number and whether they're allowed to do things like editing their own properties. So as administrator you can set those up. If we quickly just look at the account settings here, I'll go through these in detail, but you'll see as administrator I've got the ability to modify any of the settings there. Okay, so back to our cosy. Again, I'm, as I'm administrator I can check the properties and make changes to them. So modifying the name, the details there, but the thing that we're concentrating on today is our firewall settings. So within our devices and firewall, currently it shows you we're at the standard level and at the bottom it explains what that means. So all the transparent gateways, all the proxies are enabled, the users logged in can connect to any device on the LAN side of my E1 Cozy. Okay. So if I log out from as administrator and instead log in as one of those users, let me show you what the, the different view is of the account and what you can and cannot do as a user. So we've still got the same view of my cosy. We've still got the ability to view it on a map. But now when I look at the properties, I can see what the properties currently are set to, but I can't make any changes to them. So if I connect now to my E1, we'll be able to see that when the tunnel opens, it again tells me I've got access to all the devices under the uh, or attached to the LAN port on my Cozy. So all devices are available. Okay, I can connect to the internal web page of the Cozy itself here, or I can connect to the devices on the LAN port. And if I just open a, a command prompt to show you quickly, I've got two devices attached there and I can ping both of those from my command prompt and there we're connecting through to, to that one. 192.168.120.54 is the other. So those are my two devices connected on the, the LAN port and I'm not restricted to accessing those. I can also um, open up a web browser and I can uh, view the camera that's attached. 192, there we go, 55 is my camera. Log into the camera, and if we just pick plug in as a quick view, yeah. log in again, lots of security here. There, we've got our view of the camera showing my HMS devices again. So nobody's pinched anything since Monday, I hope. Okay, so that's a, a, a what's known as a, a network bridge. So from my remote location here, I can connect to any device connected on the LAN port of my Cozy. So if I disconnect that now, and I will just go back to my administrator login and let's move up and look at the high level of security in the firewall. So log back in as administrator. For my cosy now, let's look at those properties. So configuring LAN devices and firewall, what I want to do is add one of the two devices and I'm going to add the camera in this case. So give it its IP address. You can give it a, a description. In this case, just reminding myself what the passwords are. You know what I'm like at forgetting those. And we can also specify a specific protocol for it. So we're going to be browsing it with the web pages. So we've got the option there. Below here, we've got this visible in m to web option. I'm going to turn that on for now. Obviously, I'll be covering m to web in more detail a little bit later on in the presentation. But just to show you what the difference is, I'll turn it on. OK, so it now tells us that the firewall will be set to high and I'm only going to be able to access the devices that have been declared explicitly here. OK. 
So now if we go back to our E1s view and we connect to our COSY, you'll see the difference in the, the view of what's uh, available on our active connection. So there we go. Now we can see we have the COSY and we have the camera. And actually, because I made it available in m to web it also gives me a nice little shortcut. So I can just click on where it says camera and it takes me straight to that login and it remembers my password. So that's a, another nice feature of enabling the m to web, web option is if it's an HTTP connection, you can get to it directly from here. And just to prove that we can't get to the other device on my subnet, let me try pinging the device with the dot 54 extension at the end. And you'll see that is now blocked to me. I don't get a, a ping response back from the, uh, the other device on my subnetwork. OK, so that's the, uh, the two levels of firewall that are available in the, the free plus account. Um, let me just walk you through some of the other features in the account settings page. OK, so we looked at uh, the account details security. Credit and contract is uh, the place that you'll probably want to go to check what's been used in your system. And this is also where you would go to upgrade to talk to MPRO. So we'll look at the credits and payments section. And here you can download the reports, both the financial report and the connection log report, either the current one or for any previous months. So you can see in the, the list at the side here, um, which month has used more credit. And uh, that's because I was sending lots of SMS messages that month. As I said, that's also the section where you can update and request the Talk to M Pro account. So it explains what Talk to M Pro is and the request Talk to M Pro will give you those details and the account reference number to make the request through a distributor to make the upgrade. The contact details here are important for notifications. So the email addresses here, we will use these to send out notifications of security issues or other updates on the Talk to M service. So make sure you keep that up to date with the correct contact details for the account administrator. A few advanced settings to look at as well. Um, the custom fields, you've got the ability to rename those, make them useful for your particular users. Um, you've got the ability to, to change privacy, hide the geolocation, etc. The m 2 web logo program allows you to customise the, the whole look and feel of this portal so that you can offer it to your customers as a solution tied to your own company. And then E1 Auto Registration is another way of generating a, a registration key, but this one can be used for adding any E1 to this account without needing to go through the individual creation and registration process. OK. So that's what you can do in a free account. And uh, we can now log out of that and talk about pro account.